Hello, so I'm Business from Lupton and I've been getting a lot of questions about the importers feature for DocPad and what that will actually entail. Now, personally, I think the importers feature will be probably the biggest thing since sliced bread to hit DocPad. Now that sliced bread has hit DocPad, although that would be pretty funny, um, it's just importers is going to be really, really amazing. So we've got issue 500, surprisingly. Um, 500 is for importers. Now, what importers are you to do? I actually open up issue 543 that does this into a nice little mind map for us. So here we have the Docpad architecture, the ecosystem. And right now with current Docpad versions, we have the file system. So we edit our files in the file system um, say our source directory and maybe source slash document slash index.html and then that'll get imported into the docpad um, architecture and docpad will then go away and we'll, we'll pass it through our plugins so we may render it with echo or whatnot and we'll render it and then we'll stick it out somewhere and we'll host it either on a dynamic website so something like node.js, nodester, heroku, whatever and or we can host it on a static website so we do docpad generate m static and hold on, I'll just get terminal window up for you so we can see so we docpad generate m static and that will compile it for a static website now we also and static websites we can host on Google GitHub Pages, Google Drive, Apache, Dropbox, Async, whatever we want. Now, we've also got a plugin already for GitHub Pages and these plugins on the way. So, for instance, on GitHub Pages, if you actually want to deploy your website to GitHub Pages, you would just actually just install the... Wait, you would actually install the GitHub Pages plugin and then you would actually run docpad deploy GitHub Pages and that'll actually compile your website in the static environment and deploy it to GitHub pages all for you nice and dandy which is really quite nifty now we're all quite familiar with, with that aspect and, we, and some may also be um, familiar with the API aspect so Docpad can actually be run as well as a module in different systems and we provide an actual a pretty nice Node.js API to interact with Docpad um, to so for instance you could actually write your website in Express, Getty, whatever you want and actually interact with the Docpad API, interact with the database directly, interact with the Docpad server directly, whatever you want. Now there's been this area um, of importers that's, that's kind of been a bit lacking and we've had workarounds for this. In the meantime for instance let's say I have my website beerlupton.com and let's say, you know, I want to I wanna pull in my, my GitHub status or my YouTube videos, right? I can use the feeder plugin for this. So the feeder plugin pulls in RSS feeds and exposes the RSS feeds to our template data. So that happens here for my YouTube, happens for my Vimeo stuff, my GitHub activity here. So I'm already using the feeder plugin and I'll just tell my, my Docpad website, um, via the regenerate every via the regenerate every configuration option to regenerate every hour or so right so that way every hour my BL Upton website hosted on Heroku will regenerate and feeder will pull in the latest YouTube videos the latest GitHub videos and whatever I want Right, so it provides the illusion that my website is actually a dynamic website, but we actually just generate a static website every hour, so it's still ridiculously fast. Now, however, this is these feeder just puts things into the template data, right? So if I actually wanted to say use Tumblr, for instance, uh, as my blogging platform, and I actually wanted blog pages. Now, I, I could use Tumblr with feeder and then have these listings, and then when you click the link for the article, it goes and takes you away to the Tumblr website. 
or what I would really want is so when you click the link it actually goes to a page on my website so it copies the data from Tumblr into the the Docpad database right and so far the the way to inject documents to do that has been incredibly messy that's actually what we had to do and it, it hasn't been that nice so what what's happening with the Docpad um, the Docpad roadmap and Docpad vision right now is we're really targeting being able to support virtual documents so documents that don't have a physical location on your current computer so they don't have the full path attribute um, on them to be able to support them very well so Docpad version 6.44 that just came out today on July 2nd now has great support for virtual documents and the page plugin that's been up to, to use that and, and is really some quite nifty things however we're wanting to take this further so we're wanting to really take it to a point where we can pull in data from say Tumblr, from Mongo database, from RSS, from WordPress, GIST, Dropbox, whatever you want so be able to pull data directly from a third party service or a third party source including the file system, you can view the file system as one of these sources and put that content directly into the Docpad database so that way it's actually treated as a real file inside the Docpad database so that way we can render it as its own page now we've set up a, a particular skeleton um, called the site skeleton which really tries and, and gets this so I just open up my terminal window again so you can try and see I've just got a few terminal windows open so let's go projects www.docpad sites alright so I need to clean this one out so if we actually run that we'll actually see um, a website that kind of looks like this or at least this is the home page but if we go to his personal website you'll be able to see it so he's actually pulling in all his different data and his blog posts are being loaded from Tumblr now this all happens on the client side um, with with Rejo's particular thing which is why it's so darn damn slow right because it's loading everything on the client side now with Docpad, with the importers feature completed, we can actually pull in all of this data. So this data being in a sidebar, we can just use feeder for it because it's not actually a physical page. But for these things, right, we actually want that to be imported, these Tumblr posts to be imported directly into the Docpad database. Right, so that way we can give it its own unique URL. Right, so this is where it gets really interesting. So with this, with the the importers feature we're going to open up this world where we can now do this crazy stuff now what what's some implications right this is all the technical details what what's an end user experience let's say I want to write my blog right I want to write blupton.com whatever I, I could actually use tumblr as my admin interface as my CMS you could say and I write all my content on tumblr and then Docpad renders, re-renders the website every hour, pulls in the latest Tumblr blog post, and gets live. So I don't even have to redeploy my Docpad website again. I don't have to recompile my Docpad website. All of that nonsense that's really, really frustrating that everybody who works with static site generators gets frustrated at, at with some point. So by this importers feature and because of the dynamic abilities unique to Docpad will be able to deploy Docpad to a Node.js web server, tell it to regenerate every hour we can write our blog post and everything on Tumblr um, and in Docpad can pull it in and regenerate every hour right so it works perfectly, you get all the speed benefits, it's still ridiculously fast and you still get your great admin interfaces you could even use WordPress for clients that really like WordPress as well and you could write your own admin interface and just use Mongo database or hook it up to anything that's the thing importers will allow you to import anything right these are just the top priorities in terms of us getting plugins out right away 
So this is all really cool. Now after importers are done, um, one of the one of the crazy next next big huge things on the Docpad roadmap is to actually get Docpad to run on the client side. Now that's going to be a crazy ambitious project, but it's possible because Docpad is written in JavaScript. Now there's been Creationix, um, Tim Caswell. He's been working on a port of Java of Git to JavaScript to actually allow you to use Git on the client side as well. So these things are going to become possible, and they're going to become possible in a very big way. So it's going to be really quite exciting. Now, if you want to help um, bring this vision forward more, if you've received value from Docpad, if you love Docpad, or if you just want to speed things up, please, by all means, um, donate some money to help us reach a place where we could work on Docpad full time um, while still providing you great support, while still working on these things, while still just rocking it up. So 25 cents a week, it's nothing at all if you want to do that route or, or whatever you, you, you wish, but it really does help. Even 25 cents a week, it, it adds up and will create something amazing. So I'm Benjamin Lupton, and that's the lowdown of the importers feature, and it's it's going to be amazing when it hits. Cool, thanks, and keep enjoying Dogpad. See ya.